Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through the paintwork on this C200 Mercedes-Benz, painted in obsidian swartz metallic. I'm using Standox solvent-based base coat on it, and Standox Crystal Clear Pro for clear coat. As you can see, all the prep work's already been done. I've left the prep work out of this video, so it's just a paintwork video. I've been taking it in. Mastered it all up, wiped the whole car down with a wax and grease removing solvent. I'm, I'm then using the high pressure air with the air gun to, to wipe the vinyl bit, bits of dust and dirt that may be left behind from when you wax and grease removed it. So this, this video is basically unedited, it's actually really easy for me to make, it only took about 10 minutes. Um, all I've done is just put a couple of transitions into it um, and I've just sped this section, just this very start, start bit up where I'm using the tack rag. Sped that up to twice speed just to stop it from getting too long. When we start painting I've just left it at, uh, at real time speed and um, I just cut out the in between coats of uh, clear coat but I've left in between coats of base coat it usually dries pretty quickly your base coat so you notice that I'm going over the whole car twice with the tack cloth good method to do to um to make sure you get less dust in your jobs also I've taken all my paint into the booth into the spray booth with me so if you have a look up in the corner of the booth I've got my base coat colour and my clear coat all sitting there ready to go so I'm not going to end up leaving the spray booth at all once I start applying my base coat colour also helps getting less dust in your jobs because you're not opening and closing the door in between each coat and yeah, you're not going outside and getting dust on you from the guys that are standing outside in the workshop so. From the feedback I've been getting, this is what you guys want to be seeing because I've, you know, asked a few guys what they would like, what they would like to see more of and less of, and uh, this is pretty much the feedback I've been getting that you just want to see more sort of unedited, um, just more what exactly what I do, maybe double speed it like I did there at the start. But so here we go with our first coat of base coat. Uh, just going over the, the primed areas or the the rub through areas a bit the spots where you may have cut through if you've gone through to your uh, ground coat colour at all and then you put the base coat over the top of it too there's a couple of cut throughs on that door so I've just decided to put colour over the whole thing so using the Devilbus GDI Pro on this job HVLP air cap for the, for the base coat and the settings on that, full fan, full fluid, and probably about 25 psi, maybe a touch lower for base coat. I find if you have it up to 29 psi, you end up just going through twice the amount of paint, and it's not really necessary for your base coat because you're not you're not going for the the really nice wet finish on your base coat like you, you are on your clear coat. If you if you use the, the pressure too low on your clear coat, you'll end up getting too much orange peel, but the, the base coat's not going to orange peel up on you, I've found. So. Also, less overspray. So, I've found you get less dust if you actually have the, the pressure that touch lower on your base coat. If you have it cranked right up to the same as your clear, then I've found that it'll create more dusty overspray in the base coat, and you end up getting a little bit more dust. I'll be using the same same gun with a slightly different setup for for clear coat. Not the same exact gun, but the same same kind of gun. So I've got uh, multiple guns, so that's that's how I can come into the spray booth with all my different guns and not have to leave once I've started painting. Most blacks are like this. It you can pretty much see that that's actually already covered up after the first coat. I mean. You, you always put an extra coat over the top of it once you think it's covered because there might be one little, one or two little spots that aren't covered but you can see that it really does cover quite well. Most most paint brands are like that with their blacks but yeah, 
Stand Ox has got a pretty good quality, um, pretty good quality paint. Um, there's a, a few issues that we have over here in Australia because uh, this Stand Ox in Australia is actually made in Australia, and um, the blacks they're good quality paint, but the um, the colour matching on some of these blacks aren't really that good. They've improved it recently, and also the dark blues. Any any um, colour that has the 855 is the number of the tinter. Uh, any colour that has that in it, um, just uh, half of it, put half of it in, and then you can rev, uh, you can put more in need be later on. So all I'm doing here, right, is you can see I tip that pack, that black out of that can there, and and I'm about to um, top up with the other can. Only thing that happened there is that the other painter that was working here, the new guy, decided to um, start colour matching my colour by accident. <laughs> so he's gone and tipped colour in my colour that was already colour matched, and then I just decided, all right, well I'll use that for a ground coat, and I'll put that down first, and then I'll just end up putting some more. So I have to mix up some more and match some more. So that's all that was happening there. And this coat's going to be uh, the, the final coat of base coat and we'll get full coverage after this coat. It's just not quite as heavy as the first coat, it's, just, it's more a bit of an effect coat, like you, you can't really tell on the video, but um, this, this has got metallic in it, this colour. It's, it's mainly just black, but it's got a couple of blues, it's got a little bit of yellow from memory, and it does have a touch of metallic in it. Not much at all, but if, if you get it out into the sun, you can see a touch of metallic in it. So. It's actually um, exactly the same colour as the, um, the Australian Holden Commodore's Phantom Mica. I've actually found that sometimes mixing this... Uh, if you ever get one of those Phantom Micas and uh, you're trying to colour match it with Standock, sometimes you're actually better off mixing up this colour which is called Obsidian Swartz or Obsidian Black Code 197. I've found this colour actually looks better to the Holden Commodores than, than what the Holden Commodore colour looks to the Holden Commodores. So, bit of a bit of a tip there if you're um, any Aussie painters using Standock Solvent Base. Yeah, if you haven't already um, checked out my Facebook page, I put a link to my Facebook page in the comment box in every single video of mine, so check it out. Constantly uploading videos, probably yeah, three or four a week, depending on how much time I get. I'm always recording when I'm at work, so give us some feedback as well. Let us know what you think of them. I do try to... Um, change it up and make make some videos that are different but at the end of the day um, it is a process spray painting is a process there is a couple of variations that you can make on in that process but um, you sort of really the reason I may sound like I'm saying the same things in a couple of different videos is because that it's just that process that you that you must uh, follow so. Recently, I've just been given a <coughs> Pro Light. We call it a G Devilbus GDI Pro Light here in uh, Australia, but in the States they're called a Techno Pro Light. And um, yeah, I've got a review and demo on that gun. Uh, I've got a, a link to that one of those videos at the very end of this. So check that out. I reckon they're a pretty pretty awesome gun. They um, got a real nice finish on this job, this Jag I did. Yeah, so I did. I used the TA20 on that. Uh, prior to getting that gun, I always used the GDI Pros. Use and recommend them. Um, yeah, as I've mentioned in another vid, that um, I don't get. I'm not sponsored by any any paint company or any manufacturer. I'm not sponsored by Standox to to say they've got good paint. I just tell it like it is. Same thing with the um, with the spray guns. You know. I've, I have got Sarda Jet videos, I have got Oh Water videos, they're all good guns, don't get me wrong, but personal preference, uh, and there's other guys that do agree with me as well, um,
couple of guys that use exactly the same settings on the exact same guns and get the exact same results as me. So um, I find that they're <coughs> a more more like a, a user friendly spray gun. The developers, whereas um, <coughs> the eye waters are probably quite just as good, really. Like, but some people prefer them. Uh, personally, I prefer these. But I think that the starter jets are a lot more difficult to use. They're more difficult to master. I've seen guys, many guys over the years, just get runs and runs and really struggle with, um, yeah, application of clear coat with their uh, starter jets. So, so yeah, under clear coat now, using the Crystal Clear Pro HS hardener in it. Um, I've changed the settings a little bit um, for the clear coat. <coughs> I've uh, wound the fluid in just a touch because it's uh, a cold climate where I am at the moment. Um, Perth, Western Australia is where I'm from, and it's, this time of year it's a bit cold, so oh, I've decided to wind the, the fluid needle in a little bit. So um, I'm not going to get too much fluid on there, I'm not going to get runs on it. I ended up getting one or two tiny little runs because um, I changed over to the HVLP air cap on this job, whereas I usually have been using the T2 or the TransTech air cap on the probably the last couple of weeks previous to this job and um, yeah I guess that the HVLP so HVLP stands for high volume low pressure um, so high volume means you're going to get a hell of a lot of pain on there so you do have to be careful using these guns like um, yeah, I've been doing this for 15 years and I, I still got to run on this job so you know, no one's immune to it you know like yeah. and if you're trying to get it on nice and wet well, yeah good on you like it's better that you get a run every now and then than you're getting every single job dry and you're having to spend hours polishing it. I'd, I'd sooner yeah, see a young guy at start and getting a couple of runs than too much dry spray. So. It ended up quite a pretty clean job, this one. It didn't have much dust in it. Because I followed that, that procedure that I've showed you. So you, you notice there when I'm putting my clear coat on, I actually don't stop at the edge of the panel. I actually paint slightly through and see where I'm painting on this fender. I'm not stopping at the edge of the fender where the gap to the door goes. I'm actually uh, painted. I paint through those those gaps so that you don't get a big build up there. Painters will know what I mean when I'm saying that you're better off fl uh, flicking it out just off the panel. You obviously got to be careful. You, you, you don't get big build ups off the panel as well. So yep, yeah, here's here's with the bumper bar. Same settings. You can um, you can wind the fan in a touch if you want when you're doing the. Um, those openings inside here, um, I personally don't worry about it. It's just more stuff around that you have to do. And um, you, you could also wind the fluid in if you want to because there's loads of little nooks and crannies where the paint can run into. So, But personally, I find just leaving the, the, uh, the gun in the same setting and just adjust the, act, the, the way that you're spraying usually does the job good enough. So. So yeah, it looks like I did, I must have actually, I did have to go out in between coats. I went, I must have just gone out once during this job, so I must have had to go out to make some bit more clear up. I also left that for five minutes, a good five minutes in between coats as well. Yeah, second K. I've got a clip of it once it's uh, all finished off out the in the wash bay too. If you want to hang around to the end. So yeah, two bar pressure, full fan. Approximately three turns out. I've been using lately on the fluid.
in the summer months, I was uh, just having that, that fluid wound right out, so it was about to fall out, you know, just have it one or two threads hanging in on the end, but um, yeah, just in the cooler months when the panel's cool, the, the clear's cool, a bit colder, you, yeah, you just want to sort of wind that fluid in, because when it's colder, the, the paint's not drying as quickly, so there's more ha it's going to stay wetter for longer, so there's more chance of it building up and running, pulling up in areas, so... I've actually found that you can get um, some of the best finishes in the colder months if you know uh, if you know how to uh, paint really well. So by heating up the clear, heating up the panels, um, yeah, I've found that you can get actually better better results in winter. But you just do have to be careful that will it will actually flow a little bit more, which will yeah, possibly run as I say. But this job came up pretty good using the GoPro. Head, head mount on this job, one of my trademarks. Not many other guys I've seen on YouTube are doing it yet. I'm sure they'll all start doing it once they uh, see how cool it is. But so I'm just adjusting the pressure as I go there. But, um, it's just an old air compressor. It's a decent sized workshop here. It's um, it's actually it is a bit of an old workshop that I work in. I'm not gonna lie and make out as if it's the state of the art workshop, but a good bunch of guys working here, and you can still get good results in in the old workshops. So. The compressor, as I was saying, it just uh, fluctuates sometimes. So sometimes it'll go down, sometimes it'll even go up. It's, yeah. The guys will be out there using their, their drills and their grinders and guys on the orbital sanders, the DAs, sanding away. And here's me and they're trying to spray at an even pressure. But yeah. you can, you can uh, accommodate for that in the way that you can just hear it. As you're painting, it'll start dropping down. You can either change the way you paint a bit, speed up, slow down, or just try to adjust your pressure to see. I guess that's the kind of thing that makes a difference in between a good pan painter and a not a good painter, you know, like, so well and good, we can all get um, great finishes in perfect conditions, but it's um, the test, if you are a good painter, whether or not you can um, adapt to the conditions that, you work, that you're trying to work in, you know. I believe you can still get good, good paint jobs out in the workshop. If you follow the right procedures, you wet the floors down. Do all the same prep work that I've done here, you can still get great great results. So yeah, some of my older vids, as I was saying earlier, I used to uh, leave them a bit shorter. I would have left out all those uh, base coats on the bumper bar. Maybe I used to just put one coat of clear, clear coat on, uh, on the bumper bar, but... From, yeah, the feedback I'm getting, you guys want to say it, is uh, happy to have, have the longer videos. This is a 20 minute video, this one. So, I'm just leaving in, leaving in those extra coats, which, yeah. I mean, those, obviously the longer vids, I start, I actually start running out of stuff to think of uh, new, new stuff to talk about, but I do my best. So, do apologise if I um, repeat myself sometimes, I'm conscious of that, but, yeah. So after, after the car's painted, I like to give them a good five minutes, sometimes even ten minutes, uh, to flush off before I hit the bake button. So I'll go out, clean all my guns out, wash my hands up, and uh, then come back, hit the bake, uh, the bake button on the spray booth. I like to give them 45 minutes at 60 degrees. Uh, this booth takes about ten minutes to get up to heat, so that's why I give it that extra bit of time. Um, and plus the, the guys out there are going to start jumping on them and putting, handling the bumper bars, flipping them around, put, flipping them upside down so you can put those sensors in and stuff like that. So it's good to make sure they're nice and dry. So 45 minutes is a pretty pretty standard. But if, if you've got a real a boost that gets up above 60 or like 70, you can get it to 70 or 80 and it gets up real quick, well then maybe you could cut the bake, bake time down 35, 30 minutes, something like that. 
also depends on your hardness and all that kind of stuff as well. So I usually like to also leave them overnight before I polish them, and this one we did that. We left it overnight. Came out, came in the next morning, fitted it up, polished it up. So C two hundred Mercedes compressor. I think that means supercharger. But it came out pretty nice after we polished. So a couple of links here. Check them out if you haven't already seen them. Thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.